Hello there. Here I have a physical pendulum of mass M with a moment of inertia I, and it has its center of mass here with this red X, right? And that center of mass is some distance from the pendulum's pivot point, which I'm calling R. And we want to find the frequency of small oscillations for this physical pendulum using energy. So if my pendulum here are just in its equilibrium position, let's go ahead and imagine displacing it some amount. Right, so we're going to go ahead and rotate the pendulum about its pivot point here. So let's go ahead and imagine that. So I'm going to take my pendulum here and then I'm going to imagine rotating it some amount here. Right, and now using the verticals passing through the pivot point and center of mass, we can see that we've created this angle theta here with our displacement from this equilibrium position. So I'm going to define this upward direction here as my positive z direction. And so we can see that when the pendulum is in its equilibrium position, this guy here, this center of mass location, is at its lowest. So I'm going to go ahead and define this spot here as my zero potential energy location. Right, so now if I want to write the potential energy at this spot here, right, then all that I need to do, right, if this is some height h above this zero location, then the potential energy due to gravity is just going to be equal to mgh, right? So let's go ahead and write this height h in terms of our angle theta. So let me go ahead and focus on this right line here. We can make a little triangle with this, right? So here we have, let me go through. I can make a little triangle out of this, right? And so this length here, what's this guy going to be? If my hypotenuse is r, then this guy here is going to be r cos theta. Do we see that very, very clearly? This is our adjacent leg, right? And so now we can immediately see that this pink height h here plus this green height r cosine theta, add those together and you're going to get this red height r here. Or in other words, this pink h here is going to be equal to, you take the difference, r minus r cosine theta. So now we plug that in for h, I'm going to pull the r out and we have mgr times 1 minus cos theta. So now let me go ahead and emphasize that this guy here, this is our exact potential energy function in terms of this angle theta. However, to get to the regime of small oscillations, what we need to do is we need to approximate this function as though it's a quadratic, right? Whenever you tailor expand about a potential energy minimum, right? And that's what this equilibrium location is. It's at a potential energy minimum. The first non-trivial term will always be the quadratic term in your Taylor series. That's always a nice little tidbit of information to have in the back of your mind. So that way you're not going through and noting two other terms in your Taylor series that are just going to be trivial anyways. So we're just looking for the quadratic term of this Taylor series. So that's going to look like, right, one half and you take the second derivative of your potential energy function with respect to theta, evaluate that at the equilibrium location, that's going to be uh, theta is equal to zero, right? That equilibrium spot where this is just pointing straight down, theta is equal to zero, okay? And times theta squared, okay? Again, for a more general Taylor series, this could be theta minus theta naught squared, where theta naught would be the equilibrium angle. But of course, theta naught is just equal to zero. So now I need to get these two derivatives here, right? So let's take this potential energy function. So my first derivative, du d theta, is just going to be mgr times sine theta. This constant zeroes out when you take the derivative, and derivative of cos theta just becomes negative sine theta. And next, now, we'll take the derivative of this to get our second derivative, right? And so what's this going to be? mgr cosine theta, right? And now if we evaluate this derivative at theta is equal to zero, then cosine theta will just equal one and we'll have mgr. Great. So now we have this quadratic approximation for our potential energy function. One half mgr theta squared. 
right? And so to just really hammer home what we've done here using this Taylor expansion, let me show this pictorially. What we've done is we've taken our exact potential energy function, which is the red curve here, this cosine function. And what we've done is we've gone through and approximated it as the blue curve here, this quadratic. And for small enough thetas, right, for small enough displacements, this is going to be a valid approximation. But as you move far away, this approximation is going to start to break down. But it's so nice when you have these quadratic energy forms because those are the energy forms of simple harmonic oscillators, right? Think like Hooke's Law Spring. So we're going to be able to really easily get out the frequency of oscillation with this potential energy here. What we're going to do is we're going to use the conservation of energy, right? So this is a conservative system. So I'll always be able to write out my total energy E as equal to a potential energy term plus a kinetic energy term. These guys here, U and K, they can change as my angle changes, but my total energy E is always going to be a constant. So we already know u, this is going to be 1 half mgr theta squared, and our kinetic energy term, right? We have a rigid body rotating about a fixed axis, right? So, so its kinetic energy is going to be 1 half times its moment of inertia i times its angular velocity theta dot squared. So let me just go ahead and plug that in real quick. So I have E is equal to 1 half mgr theta squared plus 1 half i theta dot squared. We can extract out an equation of motion using this energy super easily. All that we need to do is take the time derivative of my energy, dE dt. Because E is just a constant, right, this derivative is just going to be zero. And now I just have to take the derivative of the right side of my equation here. So I'm going to start, I'm going to pull out these constants here. I have one half mgr, right? And I need to take the time derivative of this theta. And that's going to give me, apply the chain rule, two times theta times theta dot. I know that sometimes applications of the chain rule can be kind of confusing. So let me just take a moment and we'll focus on that. So what I need to do, right, when I'm calculating this time derivative of theta here, what I'm asking is what is d of theta as a function of time squared dt, right? So in order to apply the chain rule, what we're going to do is we say that this is equal to d of theta squared d theta times d theta dt. It's almost as though these d thetas cancel out with each other. It's mathematically improper to think of it this way, but in terms of remembering the chain rule, very nice, right? And so when we take d theta squared with respect to theta, we immediately can now see this is 2 theta, and then we just leave this d theta dt here on the side, theta dot. Okay, so that's what I'm saying when I say we apply the chain rule. Okay, so we can do the exact same thing for this next term here, and we're gonna have plus one half i times, we take the, this derivative here, apply the chain rule, two theta dot, theta double dot. And so now let me go ahead and cancel out terms. This one half cancels with two, this guy cancels, and we can divide through this whole thing by theta dot. And so we have zero is equal to mgr theta plus i theta double dot or i'm going to have theta double dot plus mgr over i times theta is equal to zero and once we get to this differential equation here we should snap our fingers look at this and go oh this is the differential equation form for a simple harmonic oscillator Okay, in general, the simple harmonic oscillator has a form that looks like chi double dot plus some angular frequency term squared times chi is equal to zero. Okay, and so matching these forms up, we can immediately extract out, this is our omega squared term, or in other words, the angular frequency, the angular frequency of this uh, physical pendulum is going to be equal to square root mgr over i, right? Or we could just write this as a frequency f, which would just be 
1 over 2 pi square root mgr over i. And there we go. So nice, now we've gone through the full process and extracted out the frequency of small oscillations for this physical pendulum here using energy. If you enjoyed this video, found it helpful, let me know in the comments and consider subscribing to the channel. I love to hear about people getting on board. But other than that, thank you so, so much for watching.